I was recently given a number of BitLocker drive images in the E01 format and tasked with quickly triaging what's in each image. In this video, I'm going to walk through a few different options on how to do that with both commercial tools and free tools in the Windows environment. For the purpose of this video, the requirement is that whoever acquired the image also provide the password or BitLocker recovery key. So you may be thinking, hey, monkey dude, if they had the password during the acquisition process, why didn't they just acquire the decrypted image? That would be nice in the perfect world, but sometimes you don't have any control of the acquisition process, so you get what you get and just have to deal with it. So if you are the person doing the data acquisition, here are the steps you can take to get the BitLocker recovery key. From the control panel, you want to go ahead and select BitLocker Drive Encryption and then find the disk volume of interest, which in our case is the letter E, and BitLocker is on. And I'm going to select Backup Your Recovery Key. And then you can choose to save to your Microsoft account or save to a USB flash drive or save to a file or print the recovery key. Let's choose save to a USB flash drive so that we have it on a USB. The pop-up asks us which drive we want to save it to, so I select a D and then save. And for those who don't like using a GUI but like to type, here is how you can do this within PowerShell. First, let's take a look at the BitLocker status of the drive of interest, which is E colon. So I'm going to type manage-bde-status e colon. So we see that the drive is indeed encrypted because we see that protection is on. And we see that there are different types of keys, including a password, a numerical password, and an external key, which is the .bek file. Let's go ahead and see these keys by using the dash protectors and the dash get option. So I'm going to do manage dash bde dash protectors dash get of e colon so we do see here we have a password id which indicates that there is a password and it won't show the password for security reasons but it does show the numeric recovery key along with its id so great let's run the command again but this time we're going to redirect the output to a file on a usb thumb drive so we can use it later the external USB is D colon, and the file will be named ssd-bitlocker-key.txt. All right, so that's saved away on the thumb drive. Another way of doing this is to use the get bitlocker volume commandlet. And we can start by just looking at the E drive. So we can do open parentheses, get-bitlocker volume dash mount point e colon and then end parentheses and we can see that it shows us uh, information about this particular drive in, in particular all of the kinds of protectors that there are all right so we can see the name of the computer we can see the volume type the mount point which we're interested in which is e shows us the capacity the volume status which is fully encrypted. And uh, the things called key protector, which as we talked about before, can either be a password, recovery key, or the BEK file. And lastly, the protection status, which in this case is on, which means is encrypted. And we can go ahead and narrow down this information by adding the specific keys that we're interested in, like the key protector. So we can run this command again, but just add the dot key protector afterwards. And we see that it uh, shows us the key protector ID with the type of password. And then we also get another protector ID, which is the key protector type of recovery password, and along with the actual recovery password itself. Okay, and lastly, we can do this one more time by adding the dot recovery password key and we just get the recovery password by itself. So this would be useful if you are scripting this, right? And you just want that specific set of information. So anyhow, now we have the recovery key. Let's see how we can use it to unlock our images. 
pretty much most of the commercial forensic suite tools can handle bit lockered volumes pretty easily. Let's take a look at how Axiom works for this demo. So I create a new case, give it a name like bl-test, and then choose the location of the case folder, and then add a evidence source. Since I have a E01 image, I'm gonna just go ahead and choose uh, computer, windows, load evidence, image, and then point to my E01 image. And after you hit next, you will have a screen for Windows decryption options. So Axiom has recognized the partition as being a bit locker volume. So here you can enter the password itself or the recovery key. And since I have viewed the output file of when we saved the recovery key in the last section there, I copy that data. And then I'm going to paste it in the box and then hit check. So Axiom seems to be happy and allows us to move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed to process the evidence with no artifacts uh, in this particular demo because I just wanna show you that this process decrypts the image and we can see the decrypted results. So give it a few seconds or so to do its thing. And then uh, Axiom Examine will pop up. And if we go to the file system section here, we can see the original image, the decrypted image. And then if we drill down and expand the levels, we can see the folders named boring stuff and juicy stuff. So pretty straightforward. So the question is whether you need to use a forensic suite tool just to view and triage the contents of the image. Well, I'm gonna let you go ahead and answer that after the next section. Next, let's look at using the Arsenal Image Mounter or AIM from Arsenal Recon. Uh, this is a tool that has a free mode for basic mounting tasks, so perfect for my cheap ass. So after launching, let's click on Mount Disk Image and then choose our E01 image. Then we are presented with a number of mount options. Since we're performing forensics, choosing the read-only is probably a good decision. For the sector size, I will leave the default and I will also leave the three check boxes unchecked as I don't need those functions. So after hitting OK, we get a prompt from the system to enter the BitLocker password to unlock the newly created logical drive of E. Here I could have typed the password or entered the recovery key into the pop-up, but I hit OK to close the location is not available pop-up instead. This caused the BitLocker pop-up to go away. But that's okay because we can go back to AIM and then from the BitLocker menu, we can choose to unlock the BitLocker protected volumes. This will cause the BitLocker pop-up to come up again. So here you can enter either the password or if you hit the more option, you can enter the recovery key. And once you've put that in there, give the system a little bit of time and then you can go to the file explorer and see that the E drive was in fact mounted and unlocked. So if we click into E, once again, we see the folders boring stuff and juicy stuff. So this is using AIM, which is again, pretty straightforward. The last tool we are gonna look at is FTK Imager, another free tool that is super powerful. So after launching FTK Imager, you can click on the image mounting icon, or you can get to that via the file menu. From this pop-up, I'm gonna select the E01 file. Then for the mount type, I wanna select just the logical, as that's all I want to do for now. If you wanna image out the decrypted image, you can select the physical and logical, or if just the physical. For the drive letter, I'm going to let the tool choose from the next available letter. And then lastly, for the mounting method, I'm gonna choose block device read only because I don't want to write to the image. Once you hit mount, you will see file explorer come up with the location is not accessible pop-up, which I will click okay to get rid of. Then I'm gonna go over to the file explorer to see that drive E is now mounted and the icon shows that it is locked. So clicking into the drive, we will see the pop-up asking for the BitLocker password or recovery key. 
Once again, you can enter either the password or the recovery key. And then once you do that, voila, we once again see the two folders that we expect, boring stuff and juicy stuff. So once again, pretty straightforward to get to the decoded data. So as you have seen, we can use a variety of tools ranging from the commercial tools to the free tools to help mount a BitLocker encrypted drive image in Windows. AIM and FTK Imager are both free for this purpose and work great. One thing to keep in mind is that you have to make sure the person who acquired the images obtained the password or BitLocker recovery key. Otherwise, this turns into a password cracking exercise, which is a topic for a whole different video. For another video on Windows Forensics, watch this video here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.